Now, as we start working with ratios, we come across this word proportion. Um, a proportion is a statement that two ratios are equal. And one way we can test to see if they're equal is we can use cross products. But there's other ways, too, and we're going to look at several other ways. Um, this idea of proportional, you probably already kind of understand about. For example, when I think about drawing a person, now I'm not much of an artist, but I'm going to give it a go. When I draw a person, okay, we think about a person and... You, when you were a baby, um, you know, you, all of your parts were smaller than they are now. But as one part of you grew, the other parts of you grew also. That's the idea of, pro of a proportion. As one thing grows, the other parts grow also. So notice my baby has grown into a full-grown person. But if you look at this picture, there's clearly something wrong with this picture. That one hand is way too big. So notice, if this was a, a real person, our person might have tripled in size since they were a baby in the other parts, but that one hand got way, 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 way too big. So this is, the idea of a proportion is, is that as one part changes, the other part changes also, but by the same factor. So in other words, um, if a person doubles in size, then all of their parts should double in size. None of them should triple or quadruple or anything like that. This is similar to working with a recipe. When you're cooking with a recipe, if you double the recipe, you have to double all of the ingredients. You can't double some of them and leave some of the same or double some of them and triple others. You have to do the same thing to all of them. So that's the idea of a proportion. So now there's a couple ways we can tell if two ratios form a proportion. So for example, if I'm looking at a ratio of 2 to 3 and a ratio of 4 to 6, and I want to see if they form a proportion. First of all, I personally think these are easier to look at when they're written in fraction form, though you don't have to. One way you can tell is you can look at cross products. That means to multiply diagonally. If they are proportional, meaning they are equal, then they will have equal cross products. So what I mean by that is, when I do 3 times 4, that equals 12. And when I multiply diagonally the other way, and I do 6 times 2, that also equals 12. So since my two cross products are equal, that means that my two ratios are equal. So I would say that yes, this one is a proportion because the two ratios are equal. I can also prove that using a model. So this model is a ratio of 2 to 3, 2 circles for every 3 triangles. Well, if I increase that to 4 circles for every 6 triangles, notice that I could take that group and I could split it into parts that each had two circles and three triangles. If I had had, if it wasn't proportional, like let's say, for example, it said a ratio of two to three compared to a ratio of four to seven, I would have one triangle left over that wasn't paired up with anything. And so that's how I would know that those were not proportional when I use a picture. That would be a way of proving it. And I can come up with lots of different ratios that are equal to a ratio of 2 to 3. If, but for every two triangle, two circles, rather, I need three triangles. So a ratio of 2 to 3 is equal to 2 to 3. A ratio of 4 to 6 would be equal to a ratio of 2 to 3. A ratio of 6 to 9 would work. I could go further and say a ratio of 8 to 12 would equal to a ratio of 2 to 3. There's lots of ways I can figure this out. I can also figure it out. I could go and say, well, a ratio of 2 to 3 is equal to a ratio of 4 to 6 because if I do 3 times 2, that equals 6. And then this times 2 would be the same thing I would have to do to my first quantity, my, my 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So let's look at another, another example. So a ratio of 3 to 5 and a ratio of 20 to 25, are they equal? Do they make a proportion? Well, let's figure that out. Lots of ways I can do it. One way I can do it is using cross products. So a ratio of 3 to 5 and a ratio of 20 to 25. 5 times 20 is 100. 25 times 3 is 75. 75 and 100 are not equal, so that means these two are not equal, therefore, no, they do not form a proportion. That's one way I can prove it. I could also prove it by um, drawing a picture, which I'm not going to do simply because it would take up a lot of space and a lot of time, but you could do that. Take some time and do that if that's a way that works really well for you. I can also look at it and say, okay, a ratio of 3 to 5, if I wanted to change it, 
to 20 to 25, I would have to do 5 times 5 to get 25. And then I look here, 3 times 5. Guess what? That does not equal 20. So what that means is those two ratios are not equal because for them to be equal, I would have to multiply both numbers by the same factor and be able to get the other ratio. So this one doesn't work, and that's another way I could prove it. Now, speaking of which, now if I have a ratio and I want to find um, a missing number to make a proportion, to make another ratio that's equal to it, it's a really similar to writing equal fractions. There's several ways I can do it. I can look at it and I can say, well, this first example, a ratio of 3 to 4 is equal to 9 to what? This one's pretty easy. I can do 3 times 3, which is 9, so I must have to do 4 times 3 here, which means that x has to be 12. Notice, if I use cross products to check that, 3 times 12 is 36, 4 times 9 is also 36. My cross products are equal, so that proves that my missing number had to have been the 12. Looking at the next one, a ratio of 4 to 7 and a ratio of m to 56. Now i got to tell you, when I look at this, again, it's easier for me to look at these when they're written in fraction form. So I'm going to think a ratio of 4 to 7 and m to 56. And I want to see, I want to make those equal. So I start looking, and I can say, okay, well, 7 times 8 is 56. 4 times 8 is 32. So my missing number must be 32. I could go back and I could use cross products to check that and make sure it's right. And if I did, I'm going to find out that it is, in fact, correct. So let's look at a couple more examples of this. And as we look, these are a little bit more challenging, perhaps. So let's look at some ways we could do them. So this first one, we have h over 12 equals 10, a ratio of 10 to 8. So a ratio of h to 12 is equal to a ratio of 10 to 8. Now this one's a little harder because when we look, we don't know what we can do 12 times to get 8 or 8 times to get 12. That doesn't work really well. But we can still think about our cross products. For example, we could do 12 times 10 is 120. And this would be 8 times h. So what we really have here is 8 times what number has to equal 120. Well, if we know from fact families, then we know that a related fact to that would be that h has to be equal to 120 divided by 8. And if we do 120 divided by 8, we're going to get that h has to equal 15. And if I went back in and I tried multiplying 8 times 15, 8 times 15 is 120, so h does in fact have to equal 15. So that's one way we could work that one out. Now you might also notice, however, that a ratio of 10 to 8 can be simplified to a ratio of 5 to 4. Now looking at a ratio of 5 to 4 equaling h to 12, all of a sudden this becomes a little, a little easier. We can do 4 times 3 to get 12, and then 5 times 3 gives us 15. So that's another way that we can see that h is 15. So we can use either of those methods, and there's others we could use as well, but there's two good methods that we could use. Those are two good methods we could use to figure out what h is in that question. Now let's look at our next one. A ratio of 5 to 15 equals a ratio of 9 to r. So let's try that with cross products. So we've got 15 times 9, and 15 times 9 is 135. And if we go the other way, we've got 5 times r, or r times 5. So what we know is whatever 5 times r is has to equal 135 in order for the cross products to be equal. So r is going to be equal to 135 divided by 5. If we were to work that out, 135 divided by 5, we're going to get that r equals 27. We could also get this by doing, so we know r is going to be 27. We could go back and use our cross products to double check and make sure we're right. If we did 5 times 27, we are going to get 135, just like we did when we did 15 times 9. Another thing that we could perhaps do is to say, well, 5 times 55, a ratio of 5 to 15 is equal to a ratio of 1 to 3. And so that ratio of 1 to 3 is equal to... 9 to r. Aha, all of a sudden, this becomes a lot easier. Since 1 times 9 is 9, 3 times 9 
is 27. So R equals 27. So there's not just one right way to do this. There's several different strategies you could use, and the best strategy truly is the one that works the best for you. One more thing that we want to talk about in relation to ratios is scale factors. Now, a scale factor is the number by which both parts of a ratio must be multiplied in order to write an equal ratio. Every proportion is going to have two possible scale factors. When we're thinking about um, ratios, this is always a multiplicative relationship. We're always thinking multiplication, um, or we can always think multiplication. So let's look at an example. So looking at this ratio table, basically what we're wanting to know is we're going to pull out these two ratios. A ratio of 4 to 5 is equal to a ratio of 12 to 15, because we're looking at the ratio of red to blue. So looking at that, our scale factor is going to be we could do 4 times 3 and 5 times 3 to get 15. So 3 is one of our scale factors. Our other scale factor is what if we had 12 to 15 and we wanted to change it to a ratio of 4 to 5? Well, in this case, we would have to do a third of 12, or in other words, 12 times 1 third to get 4, and 15 times 1 third to get 5. So our scale factor here is one third. So notice that the scale factors, that they're going to have a relationship here. Let's look at another one and see if you can see what that relationship is and then we'll talk about it. So one more example. In this one we're looking at the ratio of butter to sugar and that ratio is 12 to 16 or 3 to 4. So if we look at that, 12 to 16 is equal to a ratio of 3 to 4. So I look at this and the easiest thing for me to see is that 3 times 4 is 12 and 4 times 4 is 16. So one of our scale factors is 4. But if I want to go from 12, the ratio of 12 to 16, how do I get a ratio of 3 to 4? Well, in this case I have to do 12 times 1 fourth to get 3. Or in other words, 1 fourth of 12 is 3 and 1 fourth of 16 is 4. So my scale factor could also be described as 1 fourth. And I know you might be thinking, well, why can't I just do 12 divided by 4 is 3 and 16 divided by 4 is 4? You can do that, but again, we're looking for a multiplicative relationship. Dividing something by 4 is the same thing as finding 1 fourth of it. That's why we can do times 1 fourth. Now again, Notice the relationship here between the two different scale factors. It should be pretty apparent 4 and 1 fourth are the two scale factors, or 3 and 1 third are the scale factors. And again, it should be pretty evident how those are related. We've got a, a number and then the fraction, the unit fraction that has 1 over that number. And when we look at this one, again, remember that that times 1 fourth is the same thing as the divided by 4. So that we just don't write it as division because we want to show it as a multiplicative relationship.